anything. You have got to speak the language of the next level before you ever get to the next level. You don't just step up to the next level. There is preparation before you get to the next level. There are trials before you get to the next level. Anytime God has ever promoted me, he has put me through a test. He said, for there is the sound of the abundance of rain. How many of you have ever heard rain before you ever saw rain? A rainstorm's coming and you hear it before you ever see it. How many of you ever smelled it before it ever came? How many of you deep in your gut say, there is something about to happen to me? I don't know what it is, but I feel it down. It's like Christmas is tomorrow and it's September. I don't understand what's going on in the spirit over my life, but I just smell something and, and I just sense something is about to happen. That's what I'm talking about. He said, there is the sound of the abundance of rain. He was teasing him. How many of you ever had to be teased? See, we always want, we always want a little bit. God, can you give me just a little bit, a little clue, a little more? Sometimes he'll let you smell something before it ever comes. He'll let you feel something before it ever comes. Verse 42 so Ahab went up to eat and drink, and Elijah went up to the top of Carmel. Then he bowed down on the ground, and he put his face between his knees. I sat there, and I thought about that. He bowed down, and he put his head down between his knees. How many of you ever had a baby? That ain't nothing but the birthing position. He was getting positioned to receive his promise. Even though he's already got the promise, he could not stop praying until the fulfillment of the promise came. See, you don't just get a word and sit back and cross your leg and drink tea. Well, God said I was going to go into the ministry. But don't ever study, don't ever pray, don't ever go to conferences and quit the job and say, well, I'm just sitting back and waiting on God. Yeah. Baby, you're going to be waiting a mighty long time. I did not say you had to make it happen. I said you got to keep speaking that thing until it comes in. See, you got to speak it with faith either. You don't get down in the birth and say, oh, God, please. Lord, you didn't give me a word. I'm getting a husband. You didn't give me a word. God, please send him. Please, please. No, he's already spoke the word. So you don't have to beg and ask. It's continuing to speak it and thank you, Jesus, that it's coming. God, today might be the day. I think today is the day. God, I'm getting dressed and ready because my Boaz might be right around the corner today. You walk with full expectancy that today is the day. You pray in faith. You don't beg God because the word has already been spoken. He got the word. The rain is coming. Settled. Done deal. He already got the word. He heard it first. He believed it to be true. Didn't see it. But he knew that it was coming. So he got down and positioned himself to receive it. Position himself for the breakthrough. Have you gotten a word, but you have not positioned yourself? How many times have we gotten a word, but we are not ready if it come and slapped us up beside the head? We've gotten words in this church that this will be a national ministry. So many. I mean, even when we had 100 people, immediately we have started making things better. We started buying TV cameras, started... We don't wait till somebody comes and says, oh, I think I'm going to make you a national ministry. No, you get the word. You position yourself. You do what you need to do to be ready. We're already ready if somebody comes in and says, we're going to put your TV program right now on TBN. We are getting ourselves ready right now to receive the harvest. 
We're not waiting. We're not waiting. That's what this is talking about. You position yourself to receive the promise. That's why many of our promises have never come to pass because all we've done is got a promise and God does not see you ready. God doesn't see you ready. So he can't give it to you. You're not able to receive the promise. Still got issues. You want a wonderful husband, but you still mean as a devil. He ain't coming. You want to get married, but you want really what you want is somebody to rescue you and pay off your credit card. That's really what you want. See, but he ain't coming. Because God ain't going to send you a wonderful man to work on a project. See, we got our list of what we want our man to be. Oh, he's got to look like this, make this much money, but you ain't all that. Come on! We not ready for the promise because we ain't got down in the birthing position. We really don't believe that we're worthy to receive it. I come to tell you today, you need to put your head between your knees. That's the only thing some of you are missing is getting in the birthing position. That's the only thing some of you are missing in your church is fully being convinced that what God's already spoken to you can be yours. I see stirrups all over this building. Woo! I just see stirrups in the spirit all over this building right now. I think we're ready. I think you need to bow your head down. I think some of, come on now, don't get prideful and religious. You need to put your head between your knees and begin to claim the promise of God. How many of you, you have not received what you know God's already said you're going to have? Come on, birth that thing in the spirit right now. Come on, put your head down. Pray, 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 pray. Come on now, if you are serious, you need to birth that thing. You don't just get a word and sit back and do nothing. Some of you have received promises over your marriage, over your, your children, over a good job, over healing, over finances. Position yourself to receive. Look up verse 43. And he said to his servant, go up now. Look toward the sea. So he went up and he looked and he said, there's nothing. How many of you come to a conference, come to the altar, heard a message, something like this, and got up and there's still nothing? <laughs> so frustrating. It is so frustrating. He said he went back seven times. There's nothing. And the seventh time, he said, go again. Go again. Let me tell you something. Good leadership good leadership will always tell you to look at nothing and call it something good leadership will always try to stretch you I make some of my people so mad don't I I'm yes I do I'm there laughing. I make you so mad sometimes because I will stretch you to believe God for what you, what you know the call of God is on your life. Well, it's too hard. Well, then it's God. Then you're on the right track. Good leadership will always tell you to look at nothing and call it something. That is what faith is. I want to stretch you to believe. You cannot call it. The Bible says without faith, it's impossible to please God. Without faith, without looking at nothing and calling it something, it's impossible to please God. So if everything you got going on in your life, you can see it, it's laid out, you have got the ABCs, one, two, threes for it, you are not pleasing God. It's when God has given you a word and a hundred times you've gone out to try to find that house and can't find that house. But you know God said, 